Hi everyone, welcome to lesson two of Kids Art Week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed your project with Miss Kim yesterday, uh, the rock and roll music portraits. And today we have a teacher from Ballard, Washington named Mr. Allard. Allard. Um, his name is Lewis Allard and he says we can call him Lewis or we can call him Mr. Allard, whichever is best for your, whatever you feel comfortable with. So I wanna introduce Lewis. Hi Lewis, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, Carla. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming today. Tell us a little bit about who you are and 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 then about your project. Sure. Uh, I teach elementary school visual art. I've been a teacher for 33 years, and um, I uh, today wanted to come and, and show you how to make a calligraph print. Um, if you've ever done that before, um, it's gluing some things on a, a hard surface and then we'll take a print of it. That sounds really fun. And our subject is fish too. So you're gonna help us a little bit with the anatomy of fish. Correct. All right. All right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna follow along with you, but you have your own overhead camera as well. So um, why don't you go ahead and tell us what we need and, and we can get started. All right, great. So first thing you're gonna need uh, to have is a some cardboard of some kind and I suggested having a cereal box um, and what we're going to do is take the cereal box and open it up flat so we can cut the pieces out and so I'm just going to open it up just like this and we're going to use the cereal box and so what you're going to do is cut it up into parts and lay it out there so that what you'll need to have that I'm going to to show you right here. Once you've taken your cereal box and cut it out, make sure you have a glue stick, a pair of scissors, a pencil, and you'll also need a sponge, um, a teeny bit of water, um, a bowl to put some water in, and some aluminum foil. Uh, and then the last thing is some water-based markers. All right. So just know that those markers are the kind that you use when you get them wet, they make a mess, and that's the kind you want. Okay. I'm using a tea box. Is that okay? I mean, it'll tea make box. it smaller, but that, anything they have, it doesn't have to be a cereal box. It can be nope. a, okay. Yeah, it can be a tissue box. It can be a... Uh, um, Anything that's lightweight cardboard, I think, works best for this project. Okay, great. Yep. So first I want to tell you that the word holograph, um, it's a Greek word. The first part of it, call or kala, actually means to glue. And the second part of the word graph actually means drawing. And so really what we're doing is we're making a drawing using glue or gluing things down. So I want to share with you a person who sort of made this um, famous. His name is Glenn Alp. And um, he actually, he uh, started his life off in Colorado and um, ended up living and um, actually um, to the end of his life here in Seattle. So um, he's a printmaker. Um, he's got lots of, of things that he's done. Um, let me show you some of his work here to look at. Um, these are all holograph prints that he's made um, by having a piece of cardboard and gluing some things down underneath, either using glue or string or other materials and when those are dried on their cardboard then rolling it over with ink and it's done a great job but today we're going to make that easy for you so i want to go to um the fish page here that i pulled up of some great images and this is what we're going to look at today is this um fish print and it's going to be a pretty simple thing to do using your water-based markers so one of the things i also would like to share with you because i always like to know about my subject while I'm doing this. So here is a, a, a scientific illustration, so to speak, of, of a fish um, and its parts. And um, I want, I'd like to share this with you because I want you to know that there are the fish, parts of a fish have a specific purpose um, in what they do. And um, there are certain things to be added to the fish. So we want to take a look at some things. Um, if you're um, interested in fish that feed along the bottom of the ocean like flounder things like that they would have a mouth that's lower um, on their face um, a fish that is um, sort of uh, um, wanting to eat things from the surface where their mouth is going to be towards the top of their face um, 
fins and tails and things like that also have a little um, special note here. Sorry about that. Um, so here I just made some, some quick notes about fish tails, um, about how fast they swim. Um, so if you had a continuous tail to a point, it would be a fish that swims slow, a fish like an eel. Um, or if you want to have a fish that swims really fast, you would have a forked tail. These are fish that cruise really fast. So with that in mind, you can kind of think about how you're going to put your fish together. And before you start, you want to set yourself a place to work. So if you can see here in front of me, I have what I call my messy mat out. And you can see that I've done lots of painting and gluing and drawing and things on here, which kind of protects the table. If you don't have that, however, the newspaper works well too. So you can put a, a piece of newspaper down here because the markers make it a little messy when we get to the printing part. Are we ready to start cutting and gluing pieces? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> so you will need a piece of cardboard and I'm going to, I've already cut my cereal box um, down that I'm using into a, just a flat piece here. And I'm gonna show you my table here so you can see what I'm doing. And so here's my, my flat piece, cardboard. And then on, um, that was the back side. And then on the other side of my cardboard, um, or my, of the cereal box actually, uh, is where I'm going to make my fish shape. And so I've, I've already cut my fish shape out. I just you can draw it with a pencil and then just cut it out and lay it on your background here. So this back of the, the cardboard, the other big shape is going to be the place where, where we call or is it, an artist turns a substrate that we're going to put our fish on. Um, and so you're gonna need to place it where you want to. And I like to set my pieces out first on my cardboard or on my, my um, table before I start gluing so that I can have a chance to move things around if I'm not happy with where they're placed. So I've, I've got my fish body and you can tell by my mouth, I chose the fish that has their mouth kind of towards the bottom of their face, um, which can be kind of, um, make it kind of interesting. I'm also going to uh, cut a tail already, and I'm just using the, the uh, extra pieces from my, my, um, my box to, to make all the parts. So the great thing about this holograph is we're going to start with one layer first, and um, we're going to lay them, lay them out here. I've got my, my dorsal fin. I'm going to put my got two two fins here on the bottom and another fin on the body and you will take your time in figuring out how you want to make your fish look i just wanted to make sure that you could see that this is where we're going to put all of our parts out here so now i've got my first layer and what makes a calligraph print really stand out is to have uh, a couple of layers um, i like to think that that as i'm doing this to my limit that I place on myself to not go more than three high because if I go higher than three layers um, I'll miss out on the bottom layer because the highest layer will will then um, hog the paper so to speak so as I put these on here you'll notice like with my eye and I'm going to decide where I want to put that but my eye shape I've got my fish body and my first eye layer and my second eye layer which then creates three layers on top of my flat surface so what we're doing is creating a printing plate here actually. And before I start gluing, I just kind of, I wanna move some things around and, and see if it's how I like it. I wanna give this fish some personality while he's swimming. So I might wanna separate those out or maybe I wanna pull them together like he's really going um, fast. I've used the rounded tail, which actually is intermediate fish use. Um, I've got my um, dorsal fins and um, everything here is ready to go. The only thing that I am wanting to do is to put some more details um, on my fins. So I'm going to take some of those scraps um, that I left over and I'm going to then cut them out. I think what I want is some, maybe some lines. Um, you can put stripes on your fish body. Um, I think I'm going to put some stripes like on his tail. So I'm going to cut this piece here and put it on to see yeah that's what i want i want some of those on there i think so i'm going to cut another piece here and put it on here and, and the details that you add to your fish 
I'm just going to give it, like I said, some personality. So I'm just going to put two. That's what I want to do. And let's see. There's lots of these shapes left over from when I, I was cutting this out originally. Maybe I want to put big lips on my fish, even if you wanted to make it more comical. I can see how that looks if I want my fish to have lips. That's maybe. cute. I love that. <laughs> so now that I have my parts and I, I'm, I'm hoping that you have yours ready too, I, I could put more details on, but I want to get to the printing part with you so that you can play with this for the rest of the day. Okay. <laughs> I have mine ready, so let's go. Are we ready? Yep. So now that we have this, I'm just going to take my, my school glue or my glue stick, and I'm just going to glue these pieces down. So I'm going to then take them off and I'm just going to glue on there. And you just want them to stay. It doesn't have to have a ton of glue on there. You can use a glue stick. You could use um, glue, uh, white glue if you want to. And um, I'm just going to glue them down now that I've sort of decided where I want it to go. I have a little fish gill. Do you have a fish gill on yours? Um, I do not, actually. That's something I did not add yet. You don't have to, but I just, that's, yeah, I gills. remember always, <laughs> whenever I drew a fish, I, it they seemed like I had to have gills, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And you might want to think about scales and you can be really fancy with your fish. So I just glued my fish down on my paper, but instead of gluing the fish, I went ahead and just put the glue all over my, my paper. And that works. That works, right? Because we're just going to be yep. covering this with foil anyway. Exactly. And it'll give the foil something to stick to also if you want to do that. So here I've done the same thing. I've put my fish down. Okay, so now it's time to put our foil on. So I've torn a piece that's a little bit larger than my plate. And I'm just going to sort of smooth it out over the top. One of the things I like to do that kind of helps me get this on here is just take the whole thing and just flip it over. So now, I have the edge of the box, or my cardboard, actually. I keep calling the box. It's not a box anymore. It's just cardboard. Um, I'm going to fold the bottom edge down. And then with that in place, I can fold the, the upper edge, top edge. And then I'm going to fold the side edges up. And it's really perfectly OK that it does not cover the entire back side of your new printing plate you just made. So you can see here, my foil is only going to cover over the edges. And I'm just smushing it down as best I can, just so that it lays on my uh, cardboard plate I just made. So then I can flip it over. And I think this is kind of, this for me is kind of the fun part, because you can kind of see where, where my fish is in there. But use your fingers and just start to rub just your finger. Don't use your fingernails um, because you could tear the foil. And I just sort of rub this out so that I get all of those details I put on my fish when I had it with just the cardboard are now in, etched in the foil. And I want to just keep pressing it out and you'll start to see your fish emerge here and the foil is going to get nice and flat. Can you use like a um, the end of a paintbrush or anything, or would you recommend just sticking with your finger? Um, I, I think it's it, absolutely you could use the end of something to, to sort of push that down, because um, you really want to make sure you get to all the edges so that your entire fish that you made shows. And um, the only thing problem with an object that might be sharper or using your fingernail is that you could tear the foil. So um, I'm that's gonna... why I just used my finger to press it and you can see it's kind of already done here i've pressed it out yeah i'm going to use the the thing just in case it makes a different look and that way sure. um people can choose or try both of them so i'm just using the paintbrush to sort of um the end of the paintbrush the back side to sort of crease those down yep 
So there you can see my fish is ready to have some color added to it. So how are we doing? Did you get your fish? Yep, here's mine. Down and still covered? <laughs> You've got here's it. Mine. Oh, that's cool. There it is. Okay. So younger kids might need help with um, handling the foil because they're, it's, it can be tricky even for adults. Um, yeah. So ask ask a parent if you're having any trouble at all with the foil, and um, this is fun. <laughs> I like it too. It's, it's good. Okay, so if you're ready for the the next step, you need to grab some markers. Remember, they need to be a water-based marker, and so I've got a few here that I want to talk, tell you about that you probably already have. If you don't, that's okay. But something that's water-based. Um, this brand. Uh, Crayola and Mr. Sketch both make markers that go wash off. So that means we can use them and you get them on your fingers, you can wash them off. That's what makes the water-based markers. So either one of those works great. And so what we're going to do um, is start to color our plate. So if you're ready, I'm going to show you the plate. So here we go. I've got my plates. And so then I'm going to start. And one of the things that you can do, let's say that your fit, my fish is done here. And I was thinking, oh, I really wanted to um, show scales on here. I really wanted to have seaweed underneath this, or I really wanted to have something else in here. You can draw it on here. It's okay. not an, a problem. Okay. So I'm going to start, um, I think, with my fish. I I, I like to, um, to use, I'm going to use a sort of a warm color palette. So I'm going to use um, my red and orange and yellow here um, to color my body. And what I'm going to do is just use my marker and color it on here. So I'm going to start with the body here. And see how I, the marker is leaving um, its ink on here. And for sometimes, um, for instance, if I can show you, sometimes markers, when you start to use them, they will um, sort of bead up and look like they're they're not there. Like um, mine is. They'll <laughs> be there. When we're ready to print, you'll see that that, that is, uh, ink is going to be right where it needs to be. Because it doesn't look like it's there at all. But um, I will trust you on that, Lewis. Yep, it will be there, and you'll see. Um, in fact, I, I, uh, I had another one that I was printing, and I, um, I'll show you what this looks like. So the ink, after it's on here, after the print's done. So I took a couple of prints from this fish that I had done earlier, and you can see that the, the marker is still here, and I could leave that and add more marker on there to make another print. Um, or I can wipe it off and start fresh. It doesn't make any That's difference. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm gonna add so, a, a different color too, cause, um, to part of it, because I don't believe that, that <laughs> I got oh. enough color on there. <laughs> but I'll leave some parts and then we'll see. Yeah. Um, I like the, the color choices, like if you have a set of Tombow markers, those work great. Anything that's water-based, it's going to stay. And I also found that the first time that I make a print on the foil, because you've used your fingers to rub it, sometimes the oil from your fingers um, may be blocking the, the ink from getting to where you want it to be. So, um, But that's kind of the fun thing about prints, isn't it? That, that exactly. they're not perfect. Like they're not, it's kind of like you're, they're not meant to be perfect. That's otherwise what we would just draw on paper. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. So I can just keep coloring in. Just keep coloring in until you get it color um, all the way colored or how you want it to be colored. So anything I don't color is going to be the color of the paper. It, that's correct. It will stay. Yeah. If you don't put color um, on an area on your um, plate, it'll just make it'll stay white on your paper. Or if you're using colored paper, it'll be that color. And today for printing, I'm, I'm just using regular copy paper. And if you don't have copy paper and you've got notebook paper, for instance, or you've got um, construction paper could work, any kind of, of paper. I just like to have a solid color, but if you've got designs on there, you could try that. You can even try it with a piece of newspaper if, if that's what you've got. See what happens there. And you can tell I'm not being real, real super careful as I color. Um, I just want to make sure I get the the, the ink onto the foil um, so that when we're ready to print, it will come right off of there. I'm um, going to, is it okay if I'm going to outline my bird, I mean my, my fish? Absolutely you can, absolutely. I like to do that um, 
oh, this fish is going to have um, ink lips. Purple lips, maybe. All right, so my fish is done. So I'm going to think about my background. And I'm just going to make sure I go all the way up around the edge of my fish. Oh, so you're outlining yours too. I'm going to outline, yeah. And then I'm going to um, color out from the fish a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean about drawing things in there, because that works also. Some of my markers aren't working, but you're telling me that they, they, will, they will work, so... They should. So if you you can kind of see my the red on my um, um, my fish, um, it's they're they're not staying there. It's, it's not staying solid. Right. Those and things. So, and that's okay. Okay. Because it will come out. All right. I'm excited to see this. It's pretty fun. I always, I, what I love about printmaking is it's always this mystery until you actually pull the print and then you get, it's exciting to see what happens from all the work that you put in. And this is a pretty easy way to do it too, because you're using materials that won't ruin the furniture, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're at home and you can do this over and over and over again. This is going to last for a long, long time. As long as the foil lasts, it's going to be fine. Well, I'm ready when you are, I think. So. Okay, so I'm almost done here. I'm going to finish the front end here. All right, so let's say that I wanted to add some seaweed coming up from my um, around my fish, and um, and I got it just okay. I'll stop right there with that. So then I'm going to take. Um, I got a green marker, so let's. I can leave my print like this if I wanted to, but let's say I just wanted to add some seaweed like my fish is swimming through some seaweed and i'm just drawing it on here and seaweed just is kind of curvy lines in here and so i can just keep putting this in here and then the great thing is that if you do make your print and you don't like it don't put it on the next time this is a, one of the things i love is being forgiven so here's the next thing i'm, I'm going to show you so i'm going to set this aside for a second to talk about the printing part so you need some water and if you have a spray bottle with water it's great but i wanted to show you how much water i actually have in this bowl it's not very much you don't need a, a lot of water all you're going to do is wet your paper so the first thing i'm going to do is take my sponge and i'm going to soak it in here but i want to wring out the water so that there's not a lot of excess water in there i just want the sponge to be moist right so i have a paper towel and then i got way too much water so um yep. that's okay i'm gonna stick my paper towel in and then wring most of the water out that's what i'm hearing yes. you say okay yep all right so now i'm going to take my sponge and i'm just going to wipe across my paper just like this and you can see where it's where it's getting wet here right then um i think this is a little easier because then you can kind of see what's coming i'm going to put my plate back I'm going to take my wet moistened paper and I'm going to lay it over the top of my plate and without moving the paper you can hold it with one hand and sort of smooth it with your other hand hold it in place so it doesn't move and you can already see that I've got um, ink on my hands already from the plate because my plate was a little big if um I, sometimes when I go through this, I like to see from the back, you can start to see your print coming through. And if you don't see and you want to see it, and you want to make sure you have more ink, take your sponge and wipe the back one more time. And that will um, keep the paper wet enough to pull up the print. Ah. Right? So then you've got... Okay. So I think... Now... If this part is, is difficult, you can take a piece of masking tape to tape this down so that it doesn't move on you. Or you can certainly ask uh, another person to help you, a friend, a brother, a sister, or your parent. And to check to see if the, if the ink is coming off, I want you to look right here. I'm pulling the corner back, and I can see that I've my print is starting to come out. If you don't think it's dark enough, leave it there, and then take your sponge and just kind of go back over your um 
area that you are printing. And sometimes when they come out, they're a little light, and you just need to know that we call that a ghost print. Now you can see I've got still got a lot of marker on my plate. I could do another print from that. So I'm going to pull that aside so you can see my print, and voila. And what's great about the color graph um, with doing layers, you can notice the white line that um, separates the water from the fish or the fin parts here. And that's because you've layered your cardboard, which makes the lines stand out of your fish. That is so cool. Well, mine is kind of a, a little bit of a mess, but I like it. <laughs> and you're right, the marker that looked like it wasn't there was showing up. Let me just show you real quick. Um, what can I do to feel, to do now to make it more look like a fish if I don't get, like mine didn't turn out like yours did. So can I draw in it while it's wet or should I wait till it's dry and then maybe redraw some of the lines? You can certainly draw in it. If you draw in it when it's wet, your markers will bleed. Um, so if you want to have a, a more um, solid line, you need to wait till it dries and these won't take very long to dry. Um, and uh, if you really are that not happy with it, you certainly can take your plate and recolor it and take another print. Like you can do this a bunch of times. I've got, I want to show you the difference between, uh, <clears throat> without taking a, another print, I'll show you what I meant by a ghost print. So here I've got my, um, here's a print I made earlier today with the fish I showed you. And then when it was, after I pulled this one off and while the ink was still there without adding any more ink, I did another print and you can oh, see that yeah. it's lighter, um, which is kind of neat. And these are dry now. So I could take my markers on top of those and I could say, you know, I wanted to add some more details. Maybe I wanted to put some, you know, dots on the fin. I could go over the top of that draw on there if I wanted to. Right. Okay. So that's, what's kind of fun about using these markers is that, once you have your print, then you can go back over and make some other details or things that you'd like to make. Oh, this was so fun, Lewis. Thank oh, you so much. Everybody had fun with <laughs> what we were doing today. Yes. I love this. I've got a bunch of, of fish sitting around the table here that I've been working on, so just making prints. It's fun. You'll be at the Facebook group, won't you, to see what people have done? Oh, absolutely. I would love to see what people are creating. It'd be awesome. Good. Well, thank yeah. you again. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, um, Fish with Mr. Allard or Lewis Allard. Um, I had fun and I'm going to play with this more because I think even with my sort of dodgy um, supplies and techniques, it, it made a pretty cool looking um, texture, if, even if it doesn't really look like a fish. So um, anyway, have fun with yours. Uh, I hope that you will post on Facebook. And if not, you can email me. And if not, just show them to your family. Um, it's wonderful to share artwork that we make. So thanks to Lewis again for joining us. And we'll see you tomorrow.